Social Justice Rhetoric. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee because we're going to have a look at some rhetoric used by social justice advocates or SJWs. Now before we jump through this, let's well, let's have a look or ask the question of what is social justice. And this is the definition. It's a noun. So justice in terms of the distribution of wealth, opportunities and privileges within a society. Individ- individuality gives way to the struggle for social justice. Now, I believe in a merit-based society, everyone. I, sus- I would advocate we should have a meritocracy as much as possible. And here's the thing. Life isn't fair. It's never going to be fair. I tell my children life isn't fair. And I suspect some people just don't seem to appreciate that. They have a fantasy in their mind that life will always be fair, that it will always be just, and that the good guys always win. Sadly, that's not true. You need to resolve yourself and realize what is within your control and what you can manage. But the social justice may sound good, but it can have a very dangerous path. Remember, the path to hell is paved with good intentions. Now, this is from the what HNCS, Workforce Council. This is an example of social justice or the principle of social justice in a health position. So, principles of social justice are an essential part of effective health promotion. There are four interrelated principles of social justice. Equity, access, participation, and rights. Equity, to ensure fair distribution of available resources across society. Now, here's the thing. If to achieve this, you have to use the power of the state to steal from other people. That, that's it. Threat of violence to achieve this. To what, what, Who determines what is fair? Is it a council of elders? Is it the Communist Party leaders? Is it the you know, Australian competition, the ACCC, or the Labour Party, or the unions that influence the Labour Party, or the Liberals. In a merit-based society with a free market, and we don't have a free market now, so don't kid yourself, that would be left to no one's devices, to no one's interventions. Perhaps that's just as idealistic as having a utopian social justice uh, you know, civilization. But I would advocate striving for a merit-based society where painting one's self as a victim and taking a victim mentality isn't a path to success. The biggest concern I have is with this growing trend towards socialism. Rather than having people that are actually good at producing things or building businesses or creating jobs, you're going to have the sycophants who are good at sucking up to their superiors or who have the relationship in the in the, the party or the group or the collective, they're the ones who will be, you know, reaping the rewards. What's worse, everyone? So access. To ensure all people have access to goods and services regardless of age, gender, ethnicity, etc. Well this is the funny thing because a lot of the radical left wokies are pushing for discrimination based on exactly these issues exactly these issues there was a survey a test done of civil servants here in australia where all of the racial identifying features on potential job applicants was removed and they were just assessing them based on their qualifications and their skills and their other capabilities they found that when they removed that there was actually evidence of racism towards aboriginal women other minority groups and to females if that information was present. It's funny that, isn't it? So you've got all these pushes for, for positive discrimination, which is, a, which is discrimination, which is limiting access, opportunity, and equity to others. Participation, enable people to participate in discourse, in decisions which affect their lives. I mean, that's just a general health thing. And rights. So the right to protect individual liberties to information about circumstances and decisions affecting them, and to appeal decisions to people uh, to people that they feel are unfair. I mean, that sounds nice, 
you've seen all of the human rights implications. You know, the whole charter that they have in Victoria, which just creates more paperwork. Hey, at least it's employment for the lawyers, guys. You know, we've got to, we've got to think of the lawyers, everyone. I'm sorry, I'm just installing software as I'm recording. This is how awesome this new computer is. So let's have a look at this slide. Social justice rhetoric, which has been which is from the Oregon Association of Scholars and has been doing the rounds on Twitter. And I just thought it's worth doing a video because we hear this stuff all the time. So let let's have a look. Our cultural competence. We'll start here. What they mean. Cultural to stereotyping, which is in indoctrination in critical race theory, neo-racist, an ineffective method with no basis in scientific evidence. There you go. Environmental justice. What's environmental justice? What they mean. Environmental issues are race issues. Oh, boy. I mean, they're really, really trying to create these relationships for political purposes. This is all ideologically driven. It's, it's used to divide. And it's a push towards towards socialism, authoritarian, greater government control. Step by step, this is how the, the lefties will take away your rights, will impose more taxes, and will restrict your freedoms. If you don't think it's happening, just, just look back to the last 20, 30 years, everyone. Look at how much harder it is to start a business, how much many costs are associated, how many stupid policies are driving up housing. And a lot of them are done for environmental purposes, to make you feel good where they'll have absolutely no impact. And I'm going to bring up this quote to everyone's attention. This is from Finkel, you know, Order of Australia winner, a chief scientist. He was asked about reducing carbon emissions in the world by 1.3%. And you might ask, why 1.3%? Well, that's Australia. That's all of our carbon impact on the world. So, it, you know, it would be virtually nothing if we became completely carbon neutral. But there's still a push to do it. We're doing all of this stuff for political purposes, it's not going to make any difference. Well, no, no, sorry, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. It will definitely make any di- a difference. It will affect people's day-to-day lives. It will reduce their cost of living. Uh, no, sorry, their quality of life. It will increase their cost of living. It will push down our economic complexity even further. All these people are saying Australia should be a, a you know, environmental superpower. Come on, guys. Our, our economic complexity is below that of a Central American country that is, you know, adopting Bitcoin. We do we dig stuff out of the out of the ground. We buy houses. We've got huge wealth inequalities in this country that's growing day by day, and you've got a whole growing growing group of young people who are being attracted to this leftist rubbish, which is just going to make things worse because every single time in history it does. I guess they're probably not teaching history in school huh, these days. Look at our education results. You know what? Let's bring up let's bring up this chart. There you go. There's our academic trends. See, 2008, that was when we had the building education revolution where the government just poured money after money after money into education. And what did we get for it? Well, nothing. We're getting dumber. Literally, it was the broken window fallacy. There has some, where they demolish buildings and rebuild them. <laughs> and now liberals know better. Anyway, anyway, so using environmental protection for unrelated political purposes, an ineffective and inefficient way to protect the environment. Well, yes, it is. It's all about political power, everyone. It's all about control. Okay, decolonization. Oh, boy, this is a good one. What they mean is removing European influence. <laughs> Remove. See, this is the thing, all this woke garbage. I mean, the we've... You look at Europe, Europe is the most mixing pot of different cultures and languages. You know, the, the numbers I'm looking at now, they're from they're Arabic, everyone. They're used all over the world. I mean, come on. You, you try, and, try and teach a child English. It is such a horrible mishmash language of all these stupid rules that don't make any sense because it's English. It's like, 50, you know, everyone went to that island to conquer it. And then they realized it was cold and the food was terrible and they left again and again and again. Anyway, decolonization, okay. Which is an attempt to delegitimize the US as a colonial power, replacing the universal equality of the European tradition with a liberal non European traditions. This is the thing you need to look at. I mean, other cultures, what they're pushing for. The, the fact that feminists, 
uh, and the social justice spectrum are in bed with radical Islam. It's just ludicrous. It doesn't make any sense. It, it seems to be that they're just using it for political purposes. That's what I think it is. And a lot of these people are useful idiots. Systematic racism. Well, you know what they mean. Differences are always due to systems, which is uh, an attribu- uh, attribution of group differences to vague systems imposed by others, an attempt to dismantle freedoms and to forcibly, forcibly redistribute public and private goods. Now, there is systematic racism. And I'll give you an example in the US. You know who's pushing it? The Democrats. Democrats with school choice. They're not allowing school choice. The unions, actually. The education union in the US isn't allowing school choice. Who, who which minority do you think is stuck in all the crappy inner city union controlled schools? You get rid of school choice, then let them teach their critical race theory at their stupid schools, and then people will pick and move their kids. This is the thing. The money should be like credits provided to parents that they if for public education, and then they should pick what school they want. They go to private schools, they could go to charter schools, more freedom and power, but you know, the unions won't want that. And you know, would they would they even be able to admit that the Democrats are the ones that are the racist? You've got the whole racism of low expectation, everyone. We're seeing that here in Australia. Labor is on board with all of that rubbish. You know, in America, people that think uh, you can't get it's it's too hard for minorities to get an ID. I mean, come on, how how disgusting is that? Same thing here, same garbage here in Australia. People are saying, oh, it's too hard for him to get an ID in remote such and such. No, it's not. If you really want it, you'll get it. If you need it to get alcohol, you'll get it. I remember when I was you know young and I was in Townsville. I needed to update a ID. I got it. If you're a bit further out, oh, well, you get a lift with a friend or you catch a bus. It's called life. Come on. What what happened to resilience and working hard? Can you see that here? Oh, we can't have anyone working hard. That That's that's uh, oppression or something. You know, just hand money out to people, let them sit on their ass anyway, which is probably a much worse life. Not fulfilling at all, I can't imagine. Critical race theory, making the news. What they mean is race-centered thinking. Race center thinking. I'm reading the American news. I'm looking at stuff, and it's just so racist to a foreigner. Or everything is about race, race, race. I mean, come on, we're all people. It doesn't really matter in the end what color your skin is. Seriously. So, which is the view that racism is baked into the system and inescapable. The view that racism is present even if no one is racist. The view that all disparities in group outcomes are due to racist systems. This is what people believe. This is what they think. There's entire YouTube channels dedicated to promoting this stuff. And just think about how exhausting it must be to have this type of mindset. Wow. This, this all of it is loser think, really. It is a big dose of loser think. You're never going to achieve anything if you do this. So here we go. Inclusion. Inclusion. We're learning a lot today. This is great. This is really good that they've prepared this. So what the what they mean is restricted speech and justification for purges. We're seeing it on on social media. We're seeing it online. Everyone, you know, computing forever. A channel I used to watch quite regularly. Now he's you know not really on this platform. Molyneux. He's now been purged from this platform as well. So, which is making people feel welcome by banning anything they find offensive. An attack on freedoms of association and freedoms of speech. I mean, think about that. What happened to resilience? What happened to resilience? Would that make you feel welcome if you're a special snowflake? If it really is a victim mentality just tied up in this entire way of thinking. No wonder if you get, when you get suckered into this self-improvement is so absurd and, and just so far away. And they, they think, you know, going for a bushwalk or a hike or interest in history makes you a, a radical. So racial justice, what they mean is racial favoritism. And sadly, we have that here in Australia. How many jobs are advertised just for one race? They're, they're parts of the country where I cannot even set foot in because purely based on my race. It's, it's nuts. You need a permit to go to certain parts of Australia. So, 
using anti-discrimination laws for unrelated political purposes. That's what all of this is. This is about political power and control. This is why it's dangerous. This is the evolution of that nice-sounding dictionary quote we looked at. It evolves into this. It's used for political power, political gain, political control. A violation of equality before the law. Neo-racist, racism reborn as progressivism, group stereotyping. That's it. That these are the racists, everyone. These people are the racists, and they're using it for political power. By POC, flocks, I don't know what that is, what they mean, non-European people, which is used for neo-racist policies, racism reborn as progressive, progressivism and stereotypes. So white privilege and supremacy. What they mean is Europe, European moral culpability, which is racist scapegoating, essentially against economically disadvantaged Europeans. Neo-racist, racism reborn as progressivism, and group stereotyping. Diversity. What they mean is identity-based approach to society. I mean, is this how you want to live? Is this where you want to see Australia going? I mean, this is nuts. And they're people that, that eat all this stuff up. They think this is, this is sensible. So a violation of individual identity, enforced intellectual conformity, political quotas, an attack on merit and a form of soft bigotry. Social justice, what they mean, group entitlements. This is what I can see happening if we ever uh, receive UBI. I can see a real big push for entitlements and then there'd be every special group will have their own version of UBI, guys. Which is a denial of social and cultural differences. A denial of just rewards to individuals who follow the law and act fairly. The reframing of particular political demands as universal moral imperatives. Equity. What they mean is equality of outcomes. They don't push for equality of opportunities. They don't believe that. So, a violation of equality before the law. A dismantling of the foundations of a free society. State management of society, including reparations. I'm just waiting for my reparations from the European, uh, the Prussian, what is it, the Prussian invasion of Austria? When, when will I get those from which both sides of the family? So what are the solutions to this? Again, advocate for a meritocracy and a society that has a strong work ethic. Finally, we can just outbreed the soy. <laughs> I'm being facetious or perhaps not. And here's an image that shows you what they believe, the education reality Social class and background, uh, length of, of stay in education, and then it determines your IQ score. This is what they believe. This is what a lot of the Marxists believe. Uh, the meritocracy, IQ score, will impact your length of stay in education and your future social class. Now, they believe that you're stuck in your class and that you can't move from one to the other, which is complete rubbish. You can. People do it all the time. People come into wealth. People come out of wealth. People move between all levels of society as life goes on. And education has been proven to not impact IQ scores. If you want to impact IQ scores, I think you're going to have more chance with food than with education, everyone, with access to food. Perhaps that's why well, we're getting a bit dumber. Look at what we're all eating nowadays. So there we have it, everyone. What do you all think about this? Are you a fan of social justice? Do you like what they're putting forward? Or is this bunch, just a bunch of racist malarkey? As always, thanks for watching. Please like, share, subscribe to the channel. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on this one in the comments down below. If you're a fan and enjoy the content I create here, there are a few ways you can support us. You can join us on YouTube or Patreon. You can sign up for Self Wealth or Stake. You can use our affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve or Aussie Broadband. Buy a merch from Heiser Says. Use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint or support us via PayPal. Take care, everyone. Have a great day. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.